Chapter 12 Crawled under the small opening in the fence and reached the back side of the ex-school building. As I walked around the building looking for an entrance, I came across a large entranceway in the front. Possibly due to the building's condition getting worse, the door was half open. It was pretty obvious that it wasn't locked. I drew closer to it while keeping an eye out and carefully slipped into the opening. What laid ahead of the door was a dim, dusty entrance hallway. Matsuda? While calling out his name, I continued to proceed down the entrance hall. Wet noises could be heard coming from my shoes absorbing the moisture at my feet. Matsuda, where are you? While raising my voice and peeking down the hallway, I felt like something was out of place. Isn't it too dark? Even more so than the entrance hall, the hallway ahead of me seemed to be completely enveloped by some unnatural darkness. It was as if not even one ray of light could shine through it. But it should have still been afternoon. No matter how much it rains, there should have been some sign of the sun's light coming through the windows. Snap. A strange sound rang out in the darkness. Wah! It wasn't just once. Like a chain reaction, those sounds began to continuously multiply. Snap, 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 snap. One by one, the lights turned on throughout the hallway, and by the time the sound stopped, the whole building was bright with light. Matsuda? That was all I could think of. He must have responded to my voice calling out. With that expectation pushing me forward, I proceeded down the hallway enveloped in artificial light. Matsuda! Where are you? As I peeked into a passing classroom. Matsuda? Checking the bathroom. Matsuda! While walking up the stairs. Matsuda! Peeking into yet another classroom. Matsuda? Checking the bathroom. Matsuda! While walking up the stairs. Matsuda! While continuing to go through those actions, I eventually ended up at the highest floor. Even there while calling out, Hey! Matsuda! And going through the hallways, bathrooms, and classrooms, I couldn't catch sight of him anywhere. Getting tired, I decided to catch a quick breath. Then once again, that thought came into mind. So the ex-school building was something like this. As I walked around the building looking for Matsuda, the atmosphere didn't really give the impression that it was anything like a school. First of all, there weren't any windows here. From the first floor all the way to the highest floor, the windows in all the hallways and classrooms were boarded up with thick wooden planks, appearing to be the cause of the unnatural darkness. Furthermore, all the hallways and classrooms had seemingly nonsense, disgusting pieces of artwork with bad taste scattered everywhere. As a result, any trace of the building being a school was lost. It was unthinkable that this building was in this state even from when it was being used. But if that was the case, then someone for some reason definitely had to have planned this. But who and why? Ah, oh, you must be pretty surprised, huh? Kya! With no warning whatsoever, a voice came out from behind me, and without thinking I jumped up. In a panic, I turned around and... Huh? There wasn't anyone there. Well, that's to be expected. Even I was surprised by all of this. Even so, I could still hear that voice. Once again, I looked around my surroundings and, as I thought, I couldn't detect any human figure. Hey, big sis, where are you looking? I'm right here, you know? The voice was coming from in front of me, coming right from the hallway. Yes, yes, I'm right here. Wincing due to the exceedingly strange turn of events, I focused my consciousness towards the direction where the voice was coming from. As I continued to stare, a young boy's figure began to float up. Um, a child? Oh, I guess you forgot about me once again. The boy looking to be fed up, put his hands onto himself. I'm Yudo Kamashiro, Class 77 Super High School Level Spy. I immediately opened up the Ryoko Odanashi Memory Notebook and was able to remember before that annoying itching bothered my head. Oh! Kamashiro! Jeez, how many times have I introduced myself by now? Displeased, 
Kamashiro puffed out his cheeks. Wait, why are you in a place like this? That's what I was going to say. While letting the air out from puffing his cheeks, he spoke. Actually, how did you even get in here? Weren't there a good amount of security guards wandering around the area? It's nothing for someone with no presence like myself, but I think it would be impossible for an average person like you to get past all those guards. I was at a loss for words. There was no way he would believe me if I said that the security guards just let me through. Um, it just kinda happened. As a result, that was the only explanation I could think of. You forgot how you got in here? Oh well, guess there's no choice. But it seemed like he accepted it one way or the other. Well, there's nothing I can do if you already got here. Kamashiro then began boastfully talking about how he got into the school. From the results of various espionage activities, he caught wind of the secrets connecting the ex-school building and the series of incidents occurring, and then sneaked into the building itself not much earlier from when I reached it, it appears. By the way, it appeared that it was also Kamashiro who found the breaker to the electricity and turned on all the lights. But it's pretty impressive that you were able to find the breaker when it was so dark. <laughs> I guess the night vision scope I use in my hobbies was pretty helpful. Scared, I decided not to ask about what exactly those hobbies would be. Well, when I think about it, meeting you here was some good timing. After all, if you, my client, weren't here, the resolution phase wouldn't be able to start. Huh? Resolution phase? Kamashiro then took out a pastry and with a huge bite stuffed it in his cheeks, and spoke in a proud manner. Basically, I already got the full picture of this story down. The next step is to take care of things in a spy-like manner, and prevent it from happening. And that'll be another case complete. Hmm, I see. Eh? Isn't that reaction a bit too weak? Kamashiro proceeded to then ridiculously overreact. But a weak reaction was to be expected after all. Things like the case or the resolution phase didn't matter to me at all. More importantly, Matsuda. I need to meet Matsuda. It'll be alright. Yasuke Matsuda should be heading over here soon. Huh? You were probably worrying about Yasuke Matsuda, right? <laughs> While suppressing his laughter, he shoved the rest of the bread into his mouth and immediately started off in another direction. All right, let's go. We'll walk while talking. Eh? Go as in where? Come on. If you don't hurry, I'll leave you behind. Kamashiro then rhythmically got on the stairs, while I hurriedly followed after. Hey, hey, wait. You know where Matsuda is? <laughs> Already going off about him. You sir are impatient, big sis. Well, I don't really dislike that part of you, however. You know, it's pretty common in American movies. Those scenes where they start stripping down while roughly getting it on. That kind of impatience really turns me on. Hey, stop screwing around. You're the one screwing around, aren't you? Without thinking, my whole body froze when Kamashiro turned around and looked at me. It was because the look on his face was unexpectedly dangerous and ruthless. Matsuda, Matsuda. Man, you sure are persistent. Just be quiet and listen to what I have to say for now. Without any word of confirmation, Kamashiro's words and gaze put pressure on me, and he then returned to seemingly bouncing down the stairs. After leaping towards the end of the flight, he once again turned back towards me and... What's wrong, big sis? Hurry up! His face already returned to that innocent smile. Come on, hurry up! Uh... All right. Confused, I walked down the stairs. After rejoining Kamashiro at the end of the stairs, we continued side by side down the next flight. Okay, let's start with Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident. It seemed that his resolution phase or whatever has already begun. I think you already got the gist of it, but Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident occurred somewhere in this ex-school building. That's right, everything started right here. Connecting everything in one go, that seemed to be the detective-style way of the resolution phase. 
It was certainly the worst incident. The worst incident that ever occurred in Hope's Peak Academy. After all, 13 members of the student council composed of the elite were murdered. But there were two people who survived that worst incident. One was the super high school level student council president, Soshin Murasame, who somehow escaped along with suffering major injuries. And the other person was... Izuru Kamakura. Wait, what? Even I was surprised as I blurted out those words without thinking. How rare to see you remembering something. Kamashiro's strange gaze then stuck onto me. Well, whatever. He soon moved on and began explaining once again. Izuru Kamakura was hiding something. The fact that he was an individual amazing enough to be called Super High School Level Hope. Kamakura was researched on by Hope's Peak Academy. They raised him. He was the result of their collective effort. Every talent and ability was forced into his body that was of the super high school level class. He was truly Hope Speak Academy's hope. That's why the school hid the existence of that secret, to the point where no student knew anything about Izuru Kamakura. Whether he was a boy or a girl, he was raised completely sheltered. Sheltered upbringing, living completely closed off from the world. I was the same as him. I was shocked that it sounded almost exactly like myself. But that Kamakura guy caused a ridiculous incident to occur. Kamashiro's tone then seemed to become more serious. Kamakura, of all things, caused that bizarre mass murder to occur within the school. It really was the worst. After all, the person who was praised to be super high school level hope more than anyone else caused such a despair-inducing incident to occur. If it wasn't the worst, then I don't know what it is. That was the reason why it was called Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident. That certainly was something the school would label it as. The existence they raised together as a collective effort committing such an unprecedented bizarre murder crime. There wasn't anything to call it but the worst. But that's not all there is. What's even worse is that not only did the school not bring light to the situation, they attempted to fully conceal it. As he spoke while rhythmically stepping down the stairs, I was completely sucked into what he was saying. Without making any sort of response, without writing anything in my notebook, I just intently listened to what he had to say. The school was most likely afraid. After all, if people were to catch wind of that incident, the foundation of the school's principal talent is humanity's hope, would crumble. If that happened, the school would lose authority, and if handled improperly, it wouldn't last much longer. That's why the school is trying to hush up the incident. Well, there was probably pressure from outside sources as well, but the ones we should feel sorry about are those student council guys. Student council. Those words snuck into my head, and along with that itchiness, it forced that memory to surface. The memory was the Matarai brothers, their faces as they relentlessly chased after that incident. After all, those guys all died in vain. It really is awful. It's like as long as it's for the sake of the school's hope, anything can become a stepping stone. Even if it wasn't the preparatory department, that kind of thinking is to be expected. I shook my head and chased those images of Matarai's faces out. They don't have anything to do with me. This wasn't the time to be thinking about them. And then, the ones who led this process of covering the evidence were none other than the top of the top, the committee board members themselves. They hid the fact that Izuru Kamakura was not just a survivor, but the perpetrator of the entire incident. And that's where this ex-school building comes in? After not doing so for quite some time, I responded, and Kamashiro quickly nodded. Either way, there's no reason to ignore the place where the incident occurred. Might as well check it out while we're here carefully snooping around, right? While descending from the second floor stairs to the first floor stairs, Kamashiro continued going on indifferently. But what really was a miscalculation on the school side was... While they were moving along assuming they covered up the incident, there was still another troublesome individual that hadn't been dealt with yet. Junko and Ashima. 
The moment I spoke those words, we reached the first floor. Over here, come with me. Without a moment of hesitation, Kamashiro continued to walk forward. The first person to discover the truth of that incident was Junko Inoshima. Then, by dragging out Izuru Kamakura, she aimed to overthrow Hope's Peak Academy. While continuing to walk, both Kamashiro's destination and resolution phase seemed to be reaching the core. What happened afterwards was completely aligned with her plan. The disappearance of the committee board old men shows that. That was definitely her doing. She probably kidnapped them and forced Izuru Kamakura's whereabouts from them with brute force. Junko Enoshima really is someone to fear. Jeez. And just how is she super high school level fashion girl? Hearing Kamashiro's words, that itchiness brought up a flashback. My memories were reviving. This time, it was that concrete room with those iron bars. The corpses of the old men whose eyes were hideously sewn together were there. Big sis, what are you doing just spacing out like that? Over here, over here! Kamashiro was already standing far away, calling out towards me, and I responded. Oh, sorry. It should probably be around here. What should be here? Ah, it's this! Raising his voice, he pointed towards a small opening in the wall. I borrowed this from the security guards outside, but... While speaking, he pulled out a long rod-like object from his pocket. It looked like some kind of key. Kamashiro then inserted that key into the wall. A clink could be heard coming from his small hand. Jackpot. I was thinking it could have been this. I investigated like crazy all over this place, but there weren't any other suspicious areas. Sounding very proud of himself, Kamashiro turned the key. Along with the sound of rumbling, the door slid open like one of those automated doors. Past that door led simply a straight, long and narrow passageway. An imposing double door could be seen standing at the end. W what is this place? I said it earlier, didn't I? This is where Izuru Kamakura is hidden. Kamashiro sounded extremely excited. Matsuda is here too? He could already be here, or he could be on his way. Either way, Yasuke Matsuda will definitely show up. Kamashiro then proceeded to step foot into the passageway, and I followed suit. Our steps rang about in the cool, dim passageway as we walked straight forwards towards the back. My lips were getting dry, and I constantly felt the need to lick them. When we finally reached the end, we stopped for the time being. Without saying anything, Kamashiro put his hand on the door. Imitating his process, I did the same, and I saw that he was taking a deep breath. It seemed that even he got a bit nervous. We then exerted pressure at the same time, and the doors opened with an exaggerated groan. Past the door laid about 15 square meters of nothingness spread out. With the ceiling and pillars all being completely bare, it was truly a dreary and tasteless room. Big Sis! Over there! Kamashiro was pointing towards the corner of the room. There stood a simple elevator one would see in a factory of some sorts. That must be it! Immediately after he spoke, Kamashiro energetically ran straight towards the elevator. While I stood in hesitation, he manually pulled open the doors to the elevator and shouted out, Come on, hurry up! You want to meet Yasuke Matsuda, right? Matsuda. Those words pumped me up. That's right. The only reason I came to this dangerous place was for Matsuda. I'm sure everything will get resolved if I can meet Matsuda. This nightmare, my brain, everything will be exceptionally resolved into a happy ending waiting for me. That's why I have to go. Determined, I ran straight towards the elevator and jumped on with that momentum. The moment I got on, my legs began to tremble, and I knew I regretted it. I'm sure this elevator was made with the sole purpose to hide Kamakura. Man, they really were exceptionally careful. Here we go. Sounding amazed, he then took out the control panel from the floor and put his hand on it. There were only two buttons. Floor 1 and Floor B. Kamashiro then pressed Floor B without any hesitation. A ridiculously loud sound could be heard from the motor 
and the floor began to heavily tremble. After I continued to tremble from uneasiness, the elevator began to steadily descend. <laughs> Exciting, isn't it? Immediately, Kamashiro began to raise his voice into a cheer. It looks like you are really enjoying this. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> of course I'm afraid. Kamashiro responded with a smile on his face. To be honest, I'm actually terrified. To the point where I want to run away. Man, it's the first time I've ever felt like this. I can't believe someone like me is getting scared over this. But that's why this is so fun. After all, if I can overcome this fear, I'll develop even further as a spy. That's why I won't run away. For the sake of powering up as a spy, I won't run away. Then, a simple question floated into my head. Hey Kamashiro, why are you... Why am I so persistent about my talent? That's a silly question, big sis. He anticipated my question and responded. It's the same thing as asking a swimmer, why are you still swimming if it hurts so much? It's only natural to be so fixated on it. After all, that's all I have. While talking, Kamashiro raised up his hands as far as he could. Oh, big sis, you should stretch out your body as well. To prepare for the unexpected, you know? Come on, puff out that chest. I'll pass. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. After smiling with that innocent face, he returned to that serious look of his. If you take away my activities as a spy, I'd have nothing left. An extremely unnoticeable child. That's all I'd be. But I do have a talent. Because we have a talent, we can't choose how we live our lives. The moment we were given our talents, we already started living in our set scenario. Huh. What a one-sided lifestyle, huh? Because you have a talent, you were assigned a predestined fate to struggle with. If that's called a one-sided lifestyle, that probably is an accurate definition. But, we actually desire that one-sided lifestyle ourselves. That's why we came to Hope's Peak Academy. To continue to struggle with the talents we're proud of, along with the rest of the students in this school. You're the same, aren't you, big sis? That's why we have to keep moving forward, no matter how scared we are. This isn't some cheap line like, believe in yourself. This is our duty. If we ran away, that'd be like rejecting our very existence. That's why we have to continue to struggle. Honestly, more than anyone else, my very being that continued to doubt myself couldn't understand Kamashiro's feelings at all. After all, if I was scared, I could just run away. It doesn't have anything to do with me. Oh, but I'm not just scared, you know. Kamashiro appeared to be justifying himself. Well, it's true that I'm scared, but I'm just as excited, however. Mizuru Kamakura, Junko Onishima, the elites of the student council, Yasuke Matsuda, and the committee board. The chance to resolve the chaos that intertwines all of them. I'm sure if I'd be able to solve everything, my name would be carved into Hope's Peak Academy's history. The legendary spy who rescued the super high school level Hope, Yudo Kamashiro. Eh? Rescue? Without thinking, I responded. Even though I've been listening all this time without a word. But that's why I was so interested in the wording. You mean what I meant by rescue? You know... Izuru Kamakura is the culprit of Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident, right? The point is, Izuru Kamakura is a victim too. That's what I mean, you know? Suddenly I felt like everything went silent. That's the bizarre feeling that washed over me. But it's the committee board members who decided not to let anyone discover this horrifying truth. That's why they hid only Izuru Kamakura down here using that reasoning. If I managed to uncover the real truth and chase down the true culprit, wouldn't that be the level of something left behind in Hope's Peak Academy's history? Suddenly, his eyes began to sparkle. I don't really want appreciation from the school or anything, but just think about it. The image of the principal kneeling with tears streaming from his eyes, thanking me. <laughs> Kamashiro, while smiling, began spinning around. The sight of the excitement was similar to one of a dog greeting someone. Actually, I already imagined the whole thing. Hope's Peak Academy savior, 
super high school level spy, Yudo Kamashiro, or something. <laughs> now that would stand out. That would stand out like crazy. It stands out to the point where it would completely blow away my lack of presence. At that point, I felt like I finally caught a glimpse of his true feelings. I'm sure he believed in his talent, and at the same time he detested it. It was distorted, but most likely he was not the only one. Anyone who would be assigned with the talent would probably somehow fall towards that feeling. And then it happened right after that. Clang. Along with that sound came heavy shaking, and the sound of the motor finally stopping rang out. It seemed that the elevator has reached its destination. Looks like we're here. Finally ceasing his ridiculous dancing, he let out a quiet voice as the elevator calmly returned. And then while he walked towards the door, Now, I wonder if the masterminds are already here. Hold on. Without thinking, I held on to the door Kamashiro was heading towards. Hmm, what's wrong? You want to kiss before the decisive battle begins? No, it's not that. I had a bad feeling about this. A really bad feeling. But nonetheless, I asked him. I had to ask him. Hey, what do you mean by mastermind? Kamashiro's eyebrows twitched. Ah, that was careless of me. I was planning to reveal everything about the accomplices once I captured everybody. He then licked his lips with a bitter smile. Accomplice. The only person who could fit that category would be that girl. Actually, she's the only person I could think of. You're talking about... Mukuro Ikusaba, right? Huh? She's suspicious? Unexpectedly, Kamashiro appeared to be surprised. Wow, I didn't know that. And that means there's two accomplices, huh? Well, well, well. This is just one huge family. This time, it was my turn to be surprised. Wait, if you didn't mean Mukuro Ikusaba, then... Of course, I'm talking about Yasuke Matsuda. At that moment, I was hit with a shockwave so powerful that the word shockwave wouldn't even describe it properly. My heart began beating as fast as it could, its agonizing screams reverberating all throughout my body. A cold shiver ran up my back, numbing my spine and taking my breath away. Well, I should probably tell you this right now, but Izuru Kamakura isn't someone who necessarily should be called the culprit in the first place. He was just some poor fellow who got wrapped up in all this chaos. The real person who set this all up was Junko Anishima. Basically, she wasn't just the first to discover this case, but the mastermind pulling the strings from the shadows. The one who secretly worked as an assistant for her is none other than Yasuke Matsuda. But I wonder if it's weird for a man to be doing that sort of thing. Kamashiro's starting point for his resolution phase was such an unexpected topic that all I could do was stand there and listen. I'm pretty sure those two are the only ones aware of their relationship. Well, the school doesn't know about it at least. Otherwise, they wouldn't even request help from Yasuke Matsuda in the first place. Or maybe that was the very reason. Anyway, as a result, Enoshima was able to successfully avoid investigation from the school. I became a brainless mannequin that couldn't even perform the simplest of responses. By the way, who is this Yasuke Matsuda he's been talking about? What Yasuke Matsuda would that be? But cooperating with them wasn't the only thing Yasuke Matsuda did. Like I said before how the disappearance of the committee board members was the work of Enoshima, it appears that Matsuda was involved with that case as well. Man, they really are a great combination. I had no idea what he was talking about. In fact, I rejected comprehension of his words with all my might. By learning things I already don't want to know, my head will hurt. My chest will suffer. I'll feel like throwing up. Also, the conclusive evidence that ties them together. I've seen it. Well... It was because of witnessing that evidence that I was able to get this far to the truth, but... I don't want to hear any more. But as if stabbing me, he continued talking. Junko Anishima and Yasuke Matsuda's love scene. Junko Anishima and Yasuke Matsuda's love scene? What is that? Really? 
What is that? What is that? Really? What is that? What is that? Really? What is that? What is that? Really? What is that? What is that? Really? What is that? Really? What is that? What is that? Really? What is that? What is that? Really? What is what? What is what? What the heck is that? I heard the sound of something crashing down. It was the sound of my nerves crashing down like dominoes in a chain reaction. The dominoes with the words, Yasuke Matsuda, Junko Anishima, and Love Scene written on them all came crashing down like an avalanche. Everything was arranged. Everything was arranged by Junko and Ashima. My relationship with Matsuda, all my feelings towards Matsuda were arranged by her. Matsuda, 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 Matsuda. Matsuda? Betrayed. That word played in the back of my ears. Betrayed, fooled, used, manipulated. That was the truth. The truth of this incident. Yasuke Matsuda. Junko Anishima. Love scene. They clattered as they were crashing down. At the same time, the door was clattering while Kamashiro was prying it open. Come on, big sis. For the time being, let's get out of here. We'll talk about the rest once everyone's together. Come on, hurry up, hurry up! Still in a daze, I was pushed out of the elevator by Kamashiro. As I staggered out clumsily, I found myself in a massively tall circular hall. It was like a miniature theater. Hey, this place is pretty nice. Kamashiro's voice coming from behind me echoed across the hall. Yep, this could actually be a fitting stage for my resolution phase to begin in. It certainly looked like a stage developed with something in mind. There was nothing there. There wasn't anything that would give the impression of anyone living here. Interior design was kept to a minimum with wallpaper and carpets, and the only furniture were a bed and a drawer. There was a bare western style toilet sitting in the corner as well. Either a wide extravagant prison, or a low budget play setting. That was the impression it gave. Although what drew my attention more was, the fact that no one was there. Junko Anashima, Mukuro Ikusaba, Matsuda, or even Izuru Kamakura who was supposed to be hidden here. None of them could be seen. This was a situation instead of any of the important individuals Kamashiro just spoke of. Only the outsiders, Yudo Kamashiro and Ryoko Odanashi were standing. But I wondered if that was really so. Maybe I've been making a huge misunderstanding. All this time I've thought that I haven't met Izuru Kamakura even once. But I wonder if that was really the case. Maybe he's been watching over me all this time. Maybe the person I've been looking for has been watching over me all this time. Basically, Izuru Kamakura's true identity was... Yudo Kamashiro? I immediately turned around, but Kamashiro wasn't there. The moment I thought that, my vision perceived Kamashiro's appearance. He was crouching at my feet. No, he was more like kneeling down on the ground. But even so... Our eyes met. I instantly jumped back. The shock towards such an illogical development. My horror towards such an incoherent result. The pressure in my skull grew to a point where it wouldn't be surprising if my nose started to bleed, and my nerves began trembling to the point where they wouldn't connect properly. Kamashiro, unrelated to him kneeling down on the ground, was looking at the floor, but at the ceiling. That's impossible. To turn one's head all the way towards their back, that's impossible for a living human. Basically, that's what it was. He was already not one of the living. Kamashiro with his head turned 180 degrees back and glaring at the ceiling was completely stiff. The only thing that appeared to be living was the red stream of blood dabbling out of his mouth. He would already show no response to anyone's voice, or anyone's words. This was too much for me. It was so much for me to the point where my consciousness couldn't fully take on the sense of someone dying in front of me. Due to that, all of my reactions slowed down. If this was true, I would have already ran away from here. After all, the first thing to come to mind would be the fact that the person who did this to Kamashiro must be very close by. But I was too slow. Poor kid. 
a figure appeared next to the elevator. It was a slim, fair-skinned man, wearing a dirty shirt and pants that were of Hope's Peak Academy. If only he didn't meddle with Junko and Ashima's affairs, then maybe he wouldn't have met such a brutal end. Letting out those words with his face down, not one single emotion could be felt. H who are you? While I inquired, trembling, he lifted his face as if he only just noticed me. Are you... talking to me? He looked exhausted. A face of someone who lost everything. The face of someone who lost all his thoughts, all his senses, and all his emotions. You don't remember me? After the man responded with a cold voice, he spoke again with an even colder one. Why don't you remember? Why don't I remember? Well, uh, I easily forget things. Struck by fear and confusion, I was in complete panic. Uh, um, uh, hold on a minute, please. Flustered, I dropped my eyes towards Ryoko Odanashi's memory notebook, and it was at that moment. I was hit by that wave of itchiness. That itchiness soon turned to pain, but it was a pain that brought fever. It was like a warning signal. The frictional heat coming from the conflict of remembering Ryoko Odanashi and the forgetting of Ryoko Odanashi. That was the cause of the pain. Does Izuru Kamakura ring any bells? Eh? Hearing the words coming from that unexpected murmur, the pain went away all at once. Is that true? The man right in front of me was Izuru Kamakura, the result of Hope's Peak Academy's collaborative effort. Hope's Peak Academy's symbol, the man known as Super High School Level Hope. Then why? He looked at me with eyes full of sadness as if he was begging me to rescue him from a bottomless swamp. Why was he looking at me with such sad eyes? I don't know. I don't know, but those eerie eyes caused me to avert my eyes from him without thinking. But my gaze landed on the eyes, seemingly searching for salvation, of the corpse of Kamashiro, and I once again averted my eyes in panic. It would have been better if he didn't find out. Possibly following my gaze, he murmured as he looked down on Kamashiro. If he didn't get involved, it wouldn't have ended this way. I felt like those words were aimed at me as well, and immediately I felt as if my life was in danger. But you're different. Huh? Everything I've done so far, you have a need to know. A need to know? Huh? Why me? Before I could ask that question, he let out a big sigh. Besides, I also need more time to think. That's why I've decided to talk a bit more before I make my decision. Mumbling to himself, it was as if he was only reciting from a script. Scared of his current state, I began to try looking around the room without getting noticed, but other than a ventilation duct, there didn't seem to be any place where I could escape to. The only exit was the elevator, in which Izuru Kamakura was standing, blocking the entrance. Well, I guess I should start with Junko Enoshima's goals. Scratching his head while speaking, he didn't seem to bother meeting my eyes. Rather, he seemed to be avoiding them. Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident doesn't really mean much to Junko Enoshima in the first place. Eh? With just those words, my attention was fully drawn. Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident doesn't mean much? Junko Enoshima just wanted to stir up the pent-up emotions of the preparatory department. She got the super high school level Hope involved in that incident solely for that reason, and then incited those guys. No. It wasn't something simple like inciting, it was brainwashing. Brainwashing? Pain along with violent itching brought up that scene in my mind. The monitor's visuals I saw past the Monokuma heads in the underground facility. Crushing heads, cut faces, agonizing screams, the mutual killing red lumps of flesh. She used me and the student council as sacrifices solely for that purpose. For the guys who were just treated as leftovers, she threw the school's proud elites into a game of mutual killing. It truly was the worst incident, wasn't it? Mutual killing? While bearing the tight tension that wrapped around my chest taking my breath away, I squeezed the question out of myself. 
M mutual killing? What exactly do you mean? First of all, Hope's Peak Academy's worst incident wasn't just simply a mass murder. It was mutual killing instigated by Junko and Ashima. Instigated by Junko and Ashima? Mutual killing? Huh? Killing each other? Enoshima used the ex-school building due to its state as a closed-off vicinity, locked the student council and super high school level hope inside, and caused them to kill each other utilizing various traps. Scattering weapons, threatening to kill everyone if a murder didn't occur, murdering in plain sight to demonstrate a lesson, and so on. She was trying to make them doubt each other, to kill each other. It was almost like she just wanted to experiment. She really is messed up. Kamakura was talking as if it were someone else's affairs. Trapped between fear and confusion, all I could do was stand there and listen. And then we ended up killing each other. There was no other hope of living. Enoshima had the preparatory department watch the school's prized student council and super high school level hope, our disgusting methods of killing and staining each other with despair. Those scenes were vividly presented. He then paused and took a breath but his emotionless voice once again echoed across the room. I'm sure she planned everything to have Izuru Kamakura survive at the end. It was the worst ending for the guys at the preparatory department. To see their hated super high school level hope kill everyone else's hope and survive. It must have been an especially bad ending for them. Not only that, the school hiding the sim was probably also what Junko and Ishima had planned. That's why the preparatory department grew not only to despise super high school level hope, but the entire school. In the end, everything went completely as Junko Enoshima had planned. Everything followed her scenario perfectly. But, but for what reason? For what reason did she brainwash the preparatory department? That must have been to destroy Hope's Peak Academy as well. Not only that. Kamakura then finally looked at me. Peeking from the small opening in his long, pitch black hair, he stared at me. Her goal is... much more outrageous. Uh, outrageous To her, brainwashing the preparatory department was merely planting the seeds. The worst incident for Hope's Peak Academy. That's all that is to her. Kamakura mercilessly hurled those words towards me. I was controlled only for that purpose, and then destroyed. I was too late in realizing it. No, I was just desperately trying not to realize it. I didn't want to believe that she was so obsessed with despair. That's the truth. The despair-filled truth that I'm involved with this incident. H hey what do you and Junko Anashima have to do with each- What do I have to do with? His words were suddenly filled with intense emotion for just a moment. What does this incident mean to you? Are you gonna go with your classic nothing to do with me? If it has nothing to do with you, why are you remembering it? If it really has nothing to do with you, then it'd be best to just let that memory be lost forever. Eh? Why does Kamakura know my saying? And how did he know about me remembering? I was right, wasn't I? About you remembering? That's why you can't remember me? You remembered that I wasn't a particularly important person to you, so that's why you can't remember? Kamakura then revealed his eyes. Their glint was tainted with deadly hatred. You're such a bitch. Huh? Then, an impossible thought floated into my head. In order to deny that impossible thought, I asked, Who, who are you? You're not Izuru Kamakura. Of course I'm not you, imbecile. He then spitted out those words. I'm Yasuke Matsuda. <laughs>